My name is Riya Chattopadhyay. I hail from Kolkata and I'm 34 years old. My journey with the uh, chronic kidney disease started way back in 2020. In 2022, I got my kidney transplant surgery done. But unfortunately, within seven months, it got rejected. I was back on dialysis again, but this time with more scars, both physical as well as emotional. But what scared me the most was not the rejection. It was hyperkalemia. The major episode that I faced for the first time was back in 2023 was started as a gastric pain. I ignored it for like two days until the pain became unbearable. That's when my mother rushed me to the emergency room and my blood test revealed that my potassium was at level 9, a dangerously high. I was immediately shifted to the MICU. My dialysis was started and the doctors even prepared me to put me under ventilation in case things did not improve. But thankfully, post dialysis, my potassium dropped down to a safe level. Another time, I was at the market and suddenly I started feeling dizzy, numb, a bit sweaty. So I just sat quietly and started booking a cab home. As soon as I got up, I collapsed and I fractured my ankle. When I was taken to the hospital, my blood tests were done and my potassium was at eight point line level. Although sweatness, numbness, weakness finally made sense. There was another time when my potassium touched eight point three, but I did not feel any symptom. And that's why hyperkalemia is so frightening because at times it gives you no signals at all. Over the time, I learned to adapt and recognize the small cues. A heaviness in the chest when I breathe, a sudden flutter, in my chest, numbness, weakness, all the symptoms tell me when to act quick. In discussion with my doctor, I learned about the novel potassium lowering medicine that could help to manage hyperkalemia in the long run. Knowing such options exist helps and gives me reassurance. I was under the impression few months that uh, low sodium salt helps to keep blood pressure in check but when I spoke to my nephrologist I, well, I, I was made aware that low potassium low sodium salt actually contains high potassium that worsens the hyperkalemia. Many people with long-standing kidney disease develop a condition called high potassium in blood. Doctors call it hyperkalemia. It's quite common. Potassium is a mineral that helps your heart and muscles work properly. But too much of it can be dangerous. When the kidneys are weak, they can't remove excess potassium from the body. This can lead to symptoms like tiredness, muscle weakness, even fluttering or fast heartbeat. Sometimes there may be no warning signs at all, which makes it risky. To prevent it, patients should follow a low potassium diet, take medications regularly, and get blood tests as advised. If potassium levels do become elevated, doctors may administer special medicines or treatments like dialysis to bring them down. The key is to stay aware, follow the diet and never stop taking medicines without consulting your doctor. After all these incidents and everything, I have started believing how fragile can life be, but also how strong we can become in fighting these health issues. Now. I basically live, you know, as per my doctor's advice, doctor's guidance, as well as his dietary suggestions. So I live with more hope, but at the same time, carefully.